Welcome back to the KCCR, everybody. So, today, we're going to be going over Blood Bowl. <clears throat> Chaos Edition, specifically. Uh, this is the edition that uh, is uh, Cyanide's, I believe, uh, latest, uh, most, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Uh, the, the version that has the most in it. Okay, um, so let's get right to it. This is the main screen. When you start the game up, this is what you have. Your quote game extra settings. Uh, customize. Now, when you click customize for the first time, this is actually not here. You cannot click this. In order to have this become available, you click single player. The easiest way to do this is single player. Uh, begin a uh, competition. You're then brought to this screen. It does not matter which one of these you choose, but I always choose Blitz. So click Blitz. Uh, Actually, I'm very wrong. I clicked the wrong thing. Uh, campaign. Click Blitz. It doesn't matter what you do here. Just add some random letters so it's like, you need to name it. Okay. As I said, in order to have the customization, what you do here is you pick any one of these fucking teams. Uh, chaos. You click Chaos. It doesn't even matter what you do here at all. So just add that. Click Begin Campaign. Now, you come down to Quit. Once you're on this screen, once you're here, come down to quit and you do it. export your team and I always like to do it again just to be safe so it brings this up already exists look yes all right now and then you can just uh, quit without saving she want to return the main menu yes now if you click customize you'll have this and you'll notice that the team you just named la la la, is right here but incidentally we'll click that uh, no you can rename it here, so it doesn't matter, like I said, what you name it there. You can rename the description if you want. You can do this. You can change. You can change all of this sexy stuff. And you have a lot of different colors. Uh, depending on which team you are, it will... <clears throat> yes, 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 I get it. It will... Uh, we'll click the car Zardlings. Edit. It will change the color of... Uh, how do I... I want to I want to display team. Come on. Display team. There we go. It'll display your your dudes. And if you click like blue. It not only will it change the background, but it'll change like certain parts of the armor. Depending on what race you have, you may have more armor on, what have you. So you know, you do what you gotta do. You choose a color you like, you got a lot of symbols up here. To choose from, and there's a lot of different ones depending on which uh, race you choose. Uh, as I, you know, oh, this isn't character creation. Fair enough, it's not character creation, but it is in fact team creation and team customization. Therefore, it is nonetheless applicable. Applicable. Okay, so we'll begin with this screen here before we go into the, your actual roster. All right. When you start this, you come into customization and or whenever you're playing online with people or playing uh, with friends on LAN or whatever, whenever you are doing anything that you can make a team, you have this screen. This is settable, so like you can have lower, hell, you can have like none, you can have more. That's, that's ooh, what the hell ever. So that's if you're playing like a tournament with a bunch of people and somebody's watching over it, then they can change that, but either way, uh, we'll leave that there. Now, <clears throat> you have cheerleaders, rerolls, necromancers, assists, co coaches, fan factors, and all that lucky jazz. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people will tell you, oh, cheerleaders aren't useful, or assistant coaches aren't useful. They're, they're, <clears throat> it's not that they're not useful. It's that they have a specific use that really only ties into twice in the entire match. So a lot of people think it's a waste of money. But you're free to make a team you want to play with the fuck ever. Uh, therefore, I'm going to explain the way it works. Cheerleaders... When you click on them, the more cheers you have on your team, the more likely you are to win the cheering fans kickoff result, which is a specific kickoff event. Um, oh God, which one is it? I believe that's the one that when you you kick off a ball and the team, the fans, come onto the uh, the, the pitch and beat, beat the living shit out of the other team with chances of actually killing their dudes. It is a pretty brutal roll to get, uh, and the higher the cheerleaders you are, the higher the chance of that proccing, but it's pretty much only on kickoff. Uh, therefore, two times a match. The very start of the game and half times. So, and I suppose every time a touchdown's made, but assume you don't make touchdowns for that sake. You have re-rolls. These are by far probably the most important thing you can <laughs> spend your money on on Blood Bowl. Uh, Blood Bowl is a dice-based game where everything you fucking do Everything you fucking do is dice-based. You can do the best that you can to make those dice roll in your favor. 
But being that it is a dice-based game, you are going to fuck up. Don't go, well, I'm going to be good at Blood Bowl. No, you are going to fuck up. Just like you will die in Dark Souls, you will fuck your shit in Blood Bowl. And I don't mean you, I mean the game will fuck you up. Let me give you a story as an example. I play Undead. It's my favorite team, my favorite race. I love them for whatever reasons. Well, I was playing a friend who was new to Blood Bowl, never played before. So I have these things called mummies. They're incredibly powerful. Well, she knocked one of them down. Kudos. I went to stand it up next turn, which is pretty much no rolls. Now, it stood up and it goes, what the hell, I'll show you him. I will fucking show you him. It was... Well, apparently I renamed him. Apparently it's Raps McGee. Raps McGee stood up, and it goes, Raps McGee gouged out his own eye, and then he fell back down and took a negative to a th whatever stat he took, and literally injured and was removed from the game. All he did was stand up. That's an example of Blood Bowl bullshitting you. Either way, as I said, things will go wrong, fucking expect it. So what a re-roll is, is when you have re-rolls, and a die goes wrong, you are allowed to make a team re-roll. The more you have, obviously, the much better off you are. What that does is allow you to redo the entire roll, such as, say, a bad pass or a tackle gone wrong or that bullshit fucking eye gouge. And if you succeed on that reroll, good. If you don't, shit, you wasted a reroll. So they're very worth their money, and I actually believe they're half cost right here on the this screen. Uh, now, the next thing is grayed out for undead. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. Yes. I'm going to click on Karazardlings. You have an apothecary. Notice it's grayed out for undead. I'll explain that once I go back to them. An apothecary is a good thing. Uh, whenever a unit of yours is injured or killed on the field, the apothecary will pop up. Would you like to use the apothecary? What that does is allow you to make a re-roll on the injury table. It is quite possible that the roll will allow you to get your man back up. Let's say you take a tackle and you're injured. No negative results. You just, you'll come back next turn. Okay, cool. Uh, but let's say they die. Well, an apothecary will pop up on either rolls. The thing about an apothecary is, I believe it's a, di a d6. You have a 1 in 6 chance or some odd number like that of having it roll a 1 on the apothecary, which means, oh, your guy just tripped, so no, he's injured, but no negative effects, and you roll the apothecary because for whatever reason you did, it's possible the apothecary can kill him. As I said, dice based game, it's the most bullshit thing in the world. Either way, apothecaries are just as important as rerolls for a team such as Dark Elves. Now let's go back to my undead. Notice I have a necromancer there. That is because every undead guy has that regeneration down there. What regeneration is, is apparently is set for ghouls. That's okay because ghouls are suck. The regeneration, if you click it, will give you a description. What this does is suffers a casualty, which is an injury. Roll a d6 for regeneration after the injury roll and after an apothecary roll, if allowed. On a result of 1 and 3, the player suffers a result of the injury as normal. On a result of 4 and 6, the player with the he will heal their injury, but is placed in the reserve box. Essentially, what that does is allow anybody with the regeneration thing to not die, pretty much. So, you don't have the luxury of an apothecary. Instead, 90% of your team has regeneration, which is, is good. It's good. Uh, yeah, so that's how that works. Um, as I said, Apothecary is very, very good. Rerolls, the most important thing for your team. Cheerleaders, if you have the money, why not? I mean, they're 10k, whatever, but as I said, they have very few applications. Assistant coaches, much like cheerleaders. Now, assistant coaches include offensive and defensive coordinators, special team coaches, personal trainers, yada, yada, become more successful in numbers, and blah, 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 roster, blah, 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 other assistant coaches. What this does is uh, on a kickoff, as the more assistant coaches you have, usually the kickoff is in your favor. Uh, this can range from multiple different aspects, such as you kick the ball perfectly, and it lands exactly where you want it to land, to kicking the ball and having it bounce off of one of your own teammates' heads and killing them. Not really, but it's, it shit can get bad. Uh, such as kicking off and the other team gaining a free team reroll. So the more assistant coaches you had, the better that is, but that is literally applicable to kickoff and kickoff only. So generally speaking, people don't like people using assistant coaches because it's a waste of gold. And for all intents and purposes, unless you have free gold that you cannot and do not have any reason to spend on anything else, then sure, get them. I have them because I don't care what everybody else says. <laughs> anyway, anyways. And then you have Fan Factor. 
Fan factor is something that if you're playing in tournaments or something like that against multiple teams and playoff type scenarios, then it will go up and down every time you win or lose. If you win, it will go up by one or two. If you lose, it will go down by one or two, give or take. The more you have, your team's fan factor represents how popular the team is and how many supporters sum up to watch. Well, I can burn effects on results during a kickoff. The more fan factor you have, the better. Uh, generally speaking, uh, in tournament type play, it just like assistant coaches will affect kickoffs. Uh, all of these things, uh, cheerleaders, assistant coaches, fan factor will affect that for the most part. But fan factor really determines how much money you'll make in the tournament. So uh, the more, the better, per se, but you don't need it. Now, what's really useful for your money is team roster. Okay. Uh, notice I have all, all these guys. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go back to this this random ugly ass team over here that I, I named. I don't even... Yes. This will, If you don't have any players, it'll bring it to the screen. Uh, depending on the race you choose, uh, the race being undead, vampires, the corn demons, chaos, whatever, you'll have different units you can choose. Uh, these units range in different prices to different stats over here, which I'll, I'll explain here in like a few seconds, to different abilities. Uh, some have pros, such as Wild Animal is a con, some has, you know, pros like Mighty Blow and Thick Skull and whatnot, um, and the price. So you, you have your starter money. Now, before I go into the money aspect, I'll explain the stats here and what they represent. So let me go ahead and just click Okay, so this is this is a beast, man. All right, for the chaos. All right, notice they have like no one double, 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 whatever, and apparently they can also use mutations. That's pretty cool. Uh, if you click up here, apparently I cannot click it with this guy. Okay, we're gonna go back to my undead real quick. I'm sorry, guys. It's been fucking weird. That's a uh, team roster. The Raps McGee. Now we have an edit button right here, I guess, because he has SP. He, he, he had. And you click this. Now this is the only reason I'm clicking this is it's much easier to explain skills and stats and how this all works here. This is your main skill screen. As you play games outside of a skirmish, you know, one match, you're done for the day. Now if you play tournament type stuff, you gain SP, which you can see uh, on the screen previous. This is this right here. It'll show you how much SP you have and what level you are. As you level up, you can get a, gain a new skill. This is what they have. This will show what you, you gain via level up, so you get this. And you can also take the chance of increasing a stat up here. So we'll, we'll begin with the stats, so we'll focus this. Movement allowance. This is straightforward. This number directly represents how many squares on the pitch, i.e. field, you can move. The higher that is, obviously the better. There is no negative to having a high number there. There's a negative to having a low number. Obviously, the lower the numbers in all of these stats, the worse it is. But movement allowance, uh, let's see, the pitch is, I don't know, having a movement speed of like 8 can cover a whole half of the field. So it's, I guess, 20, 20 squares, like straight across, vertical, horizontal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so the, the more there, the better. Some units have a low amount of movement speed, such as the mummy. I believe I'm on a mummy right now because this unit is made for bashing, which come over to strength and agility. Agility is uh, directly tied into your things such as passing the ball, handing off the ball, intercepting the ball, um, dodging out of tackle zones, which I'll explain, uh, tack tackling somebody in your tackle zone, uh, to certain types of abilities, such as agility-based abilities down here, to to running uh, further than your movement speed, your movement allowance allows, which is another mechanic of the game, um, to multiple different fucking things. So. Generally, a 4 in agility is considered really high. I think the maximum is 6. So you can see why a 4 is, is really high. Uh, the general uh, down the line for most of the teams is having 3. But elf teams sport that 4 on like every one of their units. So they're crazy at the dodging and running and whatnot. Uh, we'll go out into traits skills next okay so you have strength strength is just a great thing the higher the strength is the stronger you are compared to other units this directly ties into uh injury rolls when you hit somebody and you, you make a good hit a, a defender down uh, you then roll the injury roll the higher your strength the higher the chance of you doing that uh, surpassing their armor value, which we'll get into in a sec. So, and generally, um, there are things called single, multiple, uh, double, and triple dice rolls, uh, which is essentially, uh, I have unit A, um, standing off in some corner alone, and you bring two dudes or somebody with really high strength, such as I have a unit with three strength. 
you have five strength. You're going to get double dice roll on him, and it's also going to make it almost impossible for me to attack that unit because his strength is so high, he's so much stronger that it's detrimental to my effect. If I do so and the dice are red, that means I roll, but you get to choose the outcome, which is generally not a good idea. So strength, everybody, strength. Armor value. Another thing like movement allowance. Self-explanatory. The higher that is, the harder you are to injure. Uh, uh, let's see what the maximum is. 10. So a 9 in armor value is, as you can imagine, really fucking high. Uh, armor value does not affect if you get hit or not. It affects if you take damage or not. So having somebody with a... Let's see what the maximum strength is. I, I, I don't know if 7 is the maximum, but somebody with a 7 in strength and they will, will and you get a defender down you'll hit the guy but an armor value of 9 and 10 means you have to roll against that in order to damage them so generally a guy with an armor value of 9 or 10 means don't try to don't try to kill him like don't you occupy him but don't killing him is going to be the hardest thing for you to fucking do uh, even with the luck of the dice you gi yo all right, so that's, that's your stats. Uh, as you level up, you can increase them and whatnot. But like I said, generally, like a four in agility is considered OP as hell. Let's give you a general idea of OP. Eight movement, four agility, five strength, nine armor value. OP. OP as shit. All right. Um, now we're going to fucking skills. Holy shit. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of forums out there that are like, what's the best skills to get? That is really only, oh man, that's relative to the team you've chosen. Because some teams are just different, i.e. elf teams with all their four agility. You can gain shit like dodge and all your dudes and it's shit going to benefit you really well. But generally, the general, generally the general, okay English, the general consensus is uh, block dodge, I believe they call it blodge, and guard. Guard is a great skill. Uh, what guard does is allow you to take a person with one strength and whenever they are in a tackle zone uh, that is next to a guy and you have somebody else to tag a uh, dude, uh, they will assist that. Even if for all intents and purposes they have no way of assisting in the what they call block your attempt at hitting another unit, uh, they will assist. So it's generally a good skill. But all of these skills affect certain things, such as strip ball. When a player with this skill blocks an opponent with the ball, a pushed or defender down stumbles rule will cause the opposing player to drop the ball in the square that they are pushed to, even if the opposing player is not knocked down. So what it allows you to do is strip the ball, then you've got pass block, dauntless. Uh, block, uh, there's a die roll you can get when you attack somebody, which is essentially the both of you knock each other down. If you have block, you negate that. Dodge means whenever you pass through a tackle zone, which is run by anybody think attack of opportunity in Dungeons and Dragons. Whenever you provoke an attack of opportunity, uh, dodge will allow you a one-time dodge of a hit. So if you jump in a tackle zone and jump out immediately, doesn't matter if they would hit you. Dodge will negate it. So it makes shit real good. You have stuff like leap. Player with leap skills allowed to jump once per turn to any empty square within two squares, even if it requires jumping over a player from either team. Uh, it allows you to jump over people. It's fucking crazy. You have a lot of stuff you can do here. Uh, accurate allows you to add 1d6 to the roll when you pass. So, I mean, depending on the team you choose and how you want to play, you can build your guys however you want. Uh, some mutation is a special thing that some units have access to and some do not. None of the undead have access to this, so I can't even, I can't even hover over it to explain it. But these are, these are usually, usually very good. Um, but like I said, they're limited to certain teams and certain units at that. Shadowing is shadow step. Uh, you essentially, ignoring role modifiers and math here, essentially what it does is when a unit runs by you, you have the chance of following them. Uh, and which means their ta your tackle zone is on them. So every time they move and you shadow, you have a chance of knocking them down. Uh, it's pretty good stuff. So that's generally how skills work. Every time a unit levels up, you can choose from one skill. Um that you have access to and then you have you can also choose a stat sometimes not always but sometimes uh at least that's what i've noticed i'm not 100 percent on that so take it with a grain of salt but generally yeah so we'll go back real quick in order to we'll go back from here in order to play a game you need i believe it's 11 units i have 12 but i believe you need exactly 11 units to be able to play the field but maybe it was 12 i do not remember the thing i always buy 12 so just to be safe that about covers your team roster. Um, you can only have 16 players at any one time. Now, team value is something that... Uh, don't worry too much about it. 
it goes up depending on how much of this shit you purchased and and if you look here certain units have a certain amount of team value so depending on what you do your team value may be 900 a thousand or more uh, it doesn't affect anything outside of giving you some extra cash to buy little perks at the beginning of a match. By extra cash, I mean if you have a higher team value than your opponent, they get the extra cash, vice versa. But it's usually, unless you have a drastic size in team value, like we're talking like 2,000 to somebody with 900, it's not usually enough money to really do a whole lot with. But if it's that, that much of a difference, you're pretty much giving them like a million to two million extra gold to buy what's called inducements with, which can range from a wizard who can shoot lightning at your guys on the field and fucking kill them. It's, it's, it's cray cray shit. Um, that's pretty much team customization. Now, like I said, I will go ahead and show you all the teams real quick again. Let's go back. I don't have all the teams. Let's adjust my dudes. I should delete that fucking weird guy. The teams range from... Blah, 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 blah. Here we go. You've got like 24 teams, I think. You've got quite a bit. You've got Wood Elves. You've got Vampires. And these here, these are showing you your uh, your your good units. Like, that's all this picture is. Don't think, well, all my dudes look like that. No, no. It's just this is your like super elite unit. You've got Vampires. You've got Underworld, which is whatever the fuck that is. Ugly ass goblin. You've got Undead. You've got Skaven, which are pretty much, if anybody's played Guild Wars 2, just pretty much big scrit. Uh, you've got Orcs. You've got Ogres. You've got Nurgle, which is doesn't show your super unit, but it's a big tentacle monster. You've got Norse. Necromantic, which are like werewolves and shit like that. Let's go up some. You've got Lizardmen, Corn Demons, Kemri, which are, are fucking, I guess, Egyptians. You've got humans, High Elves, Halflings, Goblins, Regular Elves, Dwarves, Dark Elves, Chaos Dwarves, Chaos, and Amazon. Each of these teams, they're vastly different from each other. Even all the elves play vastly different. Uh, wood elves versus dark elves are a whole different gameplay. Like, a whole different gameplay. Um, elves versus humans, a uh, whole different gameplay. Like, it's it's crazy. Uh, some of these teams, like, with goblins and ogres, if there's an ogre and a goblin, the go ogre can pick up the goblin and throw the fucking goblin. And the goblin team has guys with, like, chainsaws and shit like that. And they'll just, like, well, chainsaw your... Let's see what one of it shows. Uh, this guy who throws bombs at your dudes. It's, it's fucking crazy. So there's a lot of teams you have. And then you have the customization of colors. And you have the ability to change your little symbol. Which, depending on what team you have. I guess for the goblin, it's right here on his crotch. I guess you can see it right there. But for, like, the vampires, it's, it's on the back of their cape. So... That about covers team customization in terms of Blood of Bull. Now, go a little further and explain the use of customization. Okay. Assume you're just playing against AI. You can, for all intents and purposes, use that. Um, let's go back again. You can use this customize here and make a... Uh, let's and just max this because whatever if you have the money to do so and make an uber team but generally why would you do that if you're playing against players against AI do whatever the fuck you want you'll still lose you'll, st <laughs> you'll still lose welcome to Blood Bowl but against players as I said usually tournaments are hosted by a certain person who watches the mon mon money and whatnot so uh, you gain SP which is which what I, uh, I was just gonna do this with notice the SP. You'll see it there if you, you have a unit that has it that you spend on the skills and a certain amount of SP. I believe it's like 6 to gain level 2 and then doubles up to gain 3, doubles up to gain 4, etc, etc. Uh, you gain SP for making things such as passes to touchdowns to injury rolls to I'm not sure if like knocking another un another team uh, enemy opposing team member down gives it to you. Not sure about that one. But I know generally killing somebody, uh, touchdowns, great amount of SP, and it's different. I think a touchdown will give you like two or three SP. A successful long pass will give you two or three, but just handing it off will give you like one. A knockdown will give you two. I, I, I don't know the exact numbers, I just know that's how you get them. Like running isn't going to give you little actions, like dodging out of a tackle zone isn't going to give you any. So, uh, yeah, it's team customization. You can rename your dudes. You can rename them. So if you're the kind of person who... Uh, Wants to like, let's let's see here, where, where are we? A big ass fucking demon back here. It's a regular size, you know, it's a big guy. You can rename him. 
So I mean, a lot of people in terms of like, hey, name me dudes. So why not? So I'm... oh yeah. You know, and this guy's Lottie. It's a big unit. You're t some teams have what they call big guys, which are usually super powerful units, but they, they always have like a serious negative, like this one's Wild Animal. Uh, whenever I tell it to do something, it can proc Wild Animal, which it's kind of like, fuck you, uh, Bloodthirster Demon goes to sleep or use rest. You know, think of any high level Pokemon without having the prerequisite badge. It's pretty much fucking that shit. Uh, to the vampire teams, or every time you fucking tell the vampires to do anything, they're like, oh no, we're thirsty, runs off to the crowd and slaughters people, and you'll, you'll not get that player back, so, pff, shit. Uh, the only last bit of customization really is this down here, which is like, helmets, but these are, these are, are used, I, I guess you really can't see on this guy, but generally these, these last a certain amount of turns, and you have to buy them with like, money. Notice he can't buy it because he's not level 5. And the same thing over over here. So. So it's, that's that's about it. In some units, let's, let's go to my Dark Elves real quick to show you what I'm talking about here. Yes, yes, yes. Let's click this. Team roster. We'll click, uh, her. Ignore the name. La la la. Uh, some units you can change, like, certain aspects, which will change, like, I don't know, tattoos, things such as clothes, and then you have shape, which I'm not exactly sure what the shape of the witch elves does, but, yeah, so, I mean, there's, 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 a, there's a lot more customization in this than you would think there was. You're like, well, that's the way I'd expect there to be, and that's it, that's the fair assessment, that's why I decided to give you guys Blood Bowl. So, that about, what's going on up here, yeah, so that about covers... Blood Bowl, uh, Chaos Edition. Uh, the teams that are in the Chaos Edition, the added teams, if you will, are the Chaos Dwarves, I believe. Um, they, uh, it's the Chaos Dwarves, it's the Corn Demon, and I believe the Kimri, the Egyptian zombies who all have five strength and murdered me because I didn't realize they fucking had five strength. So, that's pretty much all I can tell you about the customization side of Blood Bowl. I could go into how dice works and how the game is played, but that would literally take a long time, and even then, you still may have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. The only thing I can say is, if you like what you see, go get Blood Bowl, play it, uh, bite your thumbs off, you might as well, because that's... bite your fingers off, too, because no matter how... Shit, it's not gonna matter. You're still gonna fucking lose. Uh, <laughs> get it and have fun. And always thank you for watching. And I hope that this was uh, helpful in showing you uh, the uh, controls you have over making your team your team. As always, you know what to do.